This first tutorial here is meant as an introduction to the Rhino interface. Um, we're not going to do any modeling elements, but it's really uh, important to get comfortable with uh, you know, whatever buttons you're clicking or know what to click and maybe actually more importantly what to ignore. Uh, because I know Rhino is a fairly uh, cluttered um, environment when you first get into it, but um, you'll, you'll get used to it and you'll know uh, exactly where to find things pretty quickly. Um, on the top, when you first open the program, you'll see uh, a menu bar that's pretty typical, uh, pretty standard with file, edit, view, help. Uh, but then you also have like curved surface solid. These are the sort of um, uh, program geometries that, that Rhino's uh, building. Curves or surfaces, which are planes, or solids, which are closed watertight collections of planes. You'll maybe notice that the names here are actually repeated on all of these um, tabs. Um, so, for instance, the curve tools are repeated here, surface tools repeated here, solid tools are repeated here. Um, so if I wanted to make a, a line, for instance, just a single line with two points, um, I could go to curve, I could go to the line drop down and do a single line, or I could go into the curve uh, tab, uh, and I could go over here and find it as a, a single line and do the same thing. But uh, I, I typically don't use these menu items. Um, I use Rhino primarily as a command-based program, like uh, AutoCAD. Um, and there's a lot of shortcuts, which we'll, we'll get to later, but you'll, you'll start to develop shorthands for these commands, and, and you'll be able to um, get to them faster than you may be able to get to some of these menu elements. So if I wanted to draw a line, for instance, I can start typing line in. It actually wants to autofill, so it actually fills to line. I could enter there, or I could type the whole command uh, and then hit enter. Um, it gives me a bunch of other options. These are called subcommands, and we when we start to um, build some geometries in the later tutorials, we'll, uh, we'll go over some of the differences between uh, these subcommands. Uh, but that's just one way I could, you know, create a, um, uh, another line. So another uh, characteristic of Rhino uh, that may be a little bit different from something like Revit is that you open up into what's called a split viewport. Now, these are all the same project, and you can see by the lines that I've drawn, um, it pops up in, in, um, in the other viewports. These are basically just little snapshots or basically different looks of the project. Uh, by default, Revit ha or Rhino has a uh, perspectival view, and then it has a top, front, and right view. The perspectival view is, is, is perspective. It has perspectival distortion, um, and so it could lead to maybe not so accurate modeling. But the top, the front, and the right are all what's called parallel uh, projection modes. Um, particularly, they're actually orthographic views, so they're really good for drafting or um, drawing. Um, elements specifically on something like this grid, which is called a C-plane, uh, which we'll talk about um, later. Each of these views can be maximized or minimized, so um, if you don't want, you know, this, if you have a, a small monitor or something, um, and you don't want more than one open at a time, you can double-click any of these views uh, to maximize it. Uh, you also can double-click to minimize it. You can also use this um, drop down and the drop down is uh, pretty important to each view because it allows you to change different characteristics of the viewport. So I can also maximize the view with the drop down. Uh, on that drop down, I can change uh, how the viewport is displayed. Um, so if I change it to a rendered mode here, it's going to go all white. There's no real geometry in this model, but uh, so there's no shadows or anything, but that's how you could get um, um, shadows. You can also um, do things like change the view. So if you don't want this to be a perspectival view, you can actually ha have uh, you know two back views or two right views or right, left, front, top, something. Uh, and you can always change it back. All of these views in your uh, your main when you, when you just jump into Rhino and you have these four views are actually repeated on these tabs down here. Uh, you can click into them and it will change the active viewport or if I have a view that's maximized I can click the tab to, um, to, to, to toggle into that view. I can also hold control down and uh, click tab and I'll cycle through these modes and it's telling me what um, uh, 
what mode is changing up here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the properties tabs or all of these tabs that are docked on the right side of the program by default. I don't have any geometry selected right now so what the properties is telling me is actually telling me properties of the viewport. So for instance I'm in a perspectival view it's telling me that the projection is a perspective it's actually telling me the width and the length uh, or the height of the the viewport on my screen in pixels. It's telling me the name, um, the lens length, and if I go into another view it's going to change. It's going to tell me a different um, title, a different projection mode, and I can't change a lot of this stuff because this is an orthographic projection. Now if I do select geometry, uh, it will also give me properties of the object. Uh, it will tell me what kind of, what kind of object it is, uh, what its name is, if you have actually given it a name, uh, what layer it's on, we'll talk about layers in another tutorial, and uh, maybe what it, what it looks like in terms of its display color, line type, and uh, what it will print out as. So another important tab is the Layers tab. Um, if you click into this, uh, by default, uh, whatever default templates you choose, you'll have a default layer, um, and it will have uh, five other layers with different colors associated with them. I'm not going to go into this too much now because we're going to have a whole lesson on that, uh, but layers will become uh, pretty important in terms of um, how you manage your project and how you turn things on and off um, temporarily so you can, you can build um, objects uh, precisely and accurately. The last part of the screen I want to go over, or the interface I want to go over, is the, um, this bottom uh, menu here. So we've already gone over these tabs for each of the respective views, uh, but below that are what are called O-snaps, um, and these are object snaps whenever you're modeling. Um, they're basically what you'll be able to snap to, whether it's endpoints uh, or midpoints, I could turn that on. And we'll go over um, about this more in detail when we're, we're going into some modeling tutorials. Below that, you have uh, basically an XYZ descriptor. So if I'm drawing something, you'll see that my cursor, it's, it's giving me uh, an exact location. Now the Z is zero, because I'm drawing on this plane. If I go into a front mode, you can see that the Z is gonna, um, the Z and X are changing, but the Y is uh, restricted. And then here, the X is restricted, and the Y and Z are changing in a front view. Um, you can also tell which one, uh, you know, which way is Z, which way is Y, and which way is X uh, by each of these little indicators on each of these viewport, viewports. Right next to that, you're going to have a, um, a unit indicator. Uh, whatever template or, or file you open, um, it's going to default um, to certain units. Um, and you can right click this and you can change it by going to the unit settings and you can also change your tolerance here as well. So if I, um, you know, try and get the, the length of a, of a curve, uh, it's only going to tell me to so much precision. Uh, but you can change the tolerance of that in the unit settings. Right next to that is a, uh, a layer indicator. So this is telling me what the current layer is or what, if I select an object, what um, layer it will be on. Let me, for instance, change this to, uh, to layer 1. If I have nothing selected, it's going to have the, uh, the current layer that I'm on. And if I select something, you'll see that this changes down here to layer 2 because the object I have selected is on or layer 1. Sorry. Um, and then next to that, you have a few different options. Grid snap, you can turn that on if you want to draw. Um, it's going to snap to, to you know, individual points on the grid. Um, I don't typically use grid snap, but sometimes it's really nice when you're starting out. Um, ortho is really nice. It's going to draw either uh, at 90 degree angles based on uh, your C plane, which again we'll talk about in, a, in another um, tutorial. And then you have O snaps. You can right click, you can change some of these settings. If you're familiar with AutoCAD O snaps, they're very similar. Um, you could also turn them off, or um, instead of hitting the menu icon, you can actually hit the disable function on that O-Snaps menu. There's something called Smart Track, so if I draw a line um, and I have Smart Track on, it's going to want to tell me, you know, this is a, a tangent line or a perpendicular line. And again, you can right-click and you can change those settings. 
or you can turn it off. Um, so if we're going from endpoint, see it's not giving me those tangent or those perpendicular notifications anymore. Um, after that is the gumball. The gumball is going to have its own tutorial as well, but if I select an object, you'll see this little widget pops up. Uh, you can turn that off. That's That thing is called the gumball, and it allows for sort of not so accurate um, manipulation, more like quick manipulation of the object. Um, rather than running a command, it might be easier to use the gumball. Uh, sometimes it gets in the way, but most of the time I keep it on. And then record history and filter. Um, filter I actually have on almost all of the time. Um, that's a custom uh, toolbar that I've turned on in the select panel um, over here. Um, and we'll go over that again a little bit more in another tutorial. Uh, record history, I wouldn't turn that on. I would leave that off. If you want to get into record history, you can you can watch some tutorials on that um, elsewhere, but um, it tends to be not necessary for the type of modeling that we're doing.